top out Told this nigga we gon' rock out I'm from that West Road on an all Grew up on steel stoves, he wrong We had a pallet land in the front Had a young nigga going hard Now I got bitches coming by the ton And my bank roll a little hard Now I gotta walk around with these gone Since a nigga wanna play bomb Yo, my bitch on Lord Lawn She gon' chew a nigga like gone I'll leave Yo, what's up, dude? Can I get you bored? So Frank Katie off the rip. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, join the family only because we live is doing this. All my videos live and tight, I think I got bring that little live out of YouTube. Ain't nobody else doing this like us. Now off the rip, if y'all ain't heard, my boy Thug might be in trouble. You know what I'm saying? If y'all if y'all been living under a rock, my boy Thug got indicted, the whole YSL got indicted. They got locked up by 26 people. You know what I'm saying? They got my boy Gun in there. It, it, it got real spooky for YSL, you know what I'm saying? Now, it done got a little more spooky over these last few days. They got a member, my boy YSL Woody. They say, bro, hey, man, they say my boy talk, you know what I'm saying? So, we finna see what they talking about. Shout out my boy 1090 Jake. In the sentence, y'all go subscribe to my boy. That boy gonna get it right every time. He gonna bring you them facts. I'm talking about real deal facts. So, I'm gonna put, bro, description or the video link is gonna be in the description. I'm gonna put his channel description and all that. Make sure y'all go subscribe to my boy. You gonna get you right at the time, my boy. So we finna see what he talking about. That crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Free thug, though, bro. Free thug. Y'all know that's man. Let's get it, man. 1090 Jake, man, I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're gonna be speaking on Young Thug's new indictment and the biggest snitch inside of YSL. While things are looking bad enough for Atlanta rapper Young Thug, his case just took a turn for the worst after a new indictment was announced. Arrested back in May of 2022, Thug was one of 28 people indicted under a 56 count Georgia State RICO. Accused of racketeering and participation in criminal street gang activity, Young Thug has been identified as one of three founders of YSL, short for Young Slime Life. What many thought of as just a rap label would be described by law uh, enforcement yeah, as one of Atlanta's deadliest street gangs with ties to the nationally known sex money murder gang, a subset of the Bloods. After Thugger's arrest, his house would be subject to a search that recovered drugs in a machine gun, leading to six additional charges, three of which were drug related and the other three weapons related. These charges would be used in an additional indictment that was filed on August 5th. Since news broke of the YSL takedown, it became less of a question if anyone was going to snitch, but more so a matter of who and when. In the days following Young Thug's additional indictment, paperwork hit the internet faster than a celebrity sex tape, accusing one of YSL's shooters of snitching. A blurry picture would make right its way through social media, and if anyone squinted their eyes hard enough to read it, it would state a man named Kenneth Copeland, who is more commonly known as Lil Woody, was a witness in the murder of 26-year-old Donovan Thomas, aka Peanut, a high-ranking Inglewood family blood. Now, if y'all know who bro is, my boy uh, YFN Lucci, and a lot of his songs when he first came out, he'll, like, he'll be saying Long Live Nut Forever in the beginning. So I think that's who folks are referring to. I got one of the biggest bloods in America with me, my nigga. You did. Atlanta, Georgia, nigga. This morning, the search is on for the person who shot three people, including a 14-year-old. One man died. All three victims, including a 14-year-old, were brought here to Grady Memorial Hospital. And 26-year-old Donovan Thomas was in the most serious condition, and the medical examiner's office confirmed he did not survive. A significant injury. We had uh, at least multiple gunshots in the upper uh, torso area. He was rushed to surgery. Thomas died at the hospital. Homicide detectives looked for bullet holes and brought in a police canine to search for more shell casings. They believe it was a drive-by shooting. That's the word that we're getting. We're, we're trying to see if we can get any type of video to verify that. According to the DA, this murder was said to have caused 37 violent acts of retaliation, including four Shit. murders. His death would make rappers choose sides, and as the war between Inglewood family and YSL let loose, this would also be ground zero for the criminal indictment. Kenneth Copeland, aka Lil Woody, was one of multiple witnesses who saw a young thug at a McDonald's the night of the murder. Woody would tell investigators he was with Young Thug when Thug rented the car used in the drive-by triple shooting that sent fatal rounds through Peanut's chest. 
He told investigators he knew it was the one the suspects used and stated he was in the parking lot of a McDonald's immediately after the shooting. The McDonald's was 10 minutes away from the shooting scene and Woody told investigators he watched Young Thug drive his white Jeep into the parking lot as four men got out. He identified them as Scarface, Nard, SB, and Yak Gotti. Scarface would get into Woody's car where he told Woody they just killed Nut. Multiple witnesses stated immediately after the shooting, Young Thug and the suspect. Hey man, you gotta really trust people to be moving like that, bro. You gotta really trust people, bro. No cap. You might well get, you know what I'm saying, get busy by yourself, bro. meet in this condo where they pack their bags and head to you gonna engage in that kind of activity. All of these witness statements would easily be confirmed by detectives as cell phone records would show multiple suspects and gang members making calls to Young Thug before and after the murder. Using the same phone records, GPS coordinates told detectives the suspects relocated to Thug's condo in Midtown Atlanta. Multiple suspects, persons of interest, and gang members stated to detectives Young Thug was aware of the murder and even orchestrated it as witnesses saw him near the murder scene just minutes after it happened and then at the McDonald's 10 minutes away. Paying close attention to the paperwork, it clearly states there were multiple witnesses, meaning Lil Woody wasn't the only snitch, but he may be the biggest snitch in YSL. Another picture of paperwork would find its way to the internet detailing an alleged interview Lil Woody gave to the police. Woody would be named as a victim, and on January 20th of 2020, he was arrested for violating probation and transported to the Fulton County Jail. Investigators obtained an order of production before transporting Woody to the police headquarters for an interview to discuss the recent shootings surrounding the death of Peanut. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, bro. Y'all know how they go? When you, uh, you feel me? Snitch rules, hey, hey, them snitch rules something different. Cause look, you could be a victim in a situation, right? And you go tell 12, yeah, that bro right there who robbed me, him right there, he shot me. You snitching. You feel me? Point blank, period. Niggas ain't trying to hear none of that. Niggas want you to don't tell nobody. Don't get busy by yourself. You know what I'm saying? So if you just been victimized, walk up to you and slap you, take your money while you're in your car, and 12 sitting right there, and you flag 12 down, hey, he's your robber. You snitching, bro. You feel me? Surprisingly, what do you It ain't got to be on somebody you did something murder. with. It could be on the wrong did something with. decided to ask him about another drive by in which he was the target and his child and girlfriend were present. Woody gave the name Tay to someone he recognized. Investigators showed him a photo lineup, specifically including a man named Octavius Franklin, a known associate of Peanut and member of the Inglewood family bloods. Woody was unable to identify Tay, stating there was another Tay, but he didn't know his real name. Woody then said Tay has a brother named Wu, who was a well-known blood. Investigators knew Wu as Javante Fleetwood, and further investigation would reveal his brother, Dalavante Fleetwood. A photo of Dalavante was shown to Woody, and Woody positively identified him as the one who shot at him. So according to these two pictures floating around social media, Lil Woody not only snitched on his own people for murdering Peanut, but he also snitched on the Inglewood family bloods for trying to murder him. While many are already convinced Lil Woody is a rat, nobody else has been able to produce any of the paperwork or even a high quality picture of the paperwork, leaving some speculating it could be fake. But that's why y'all rocking with me and you know I'm rocking with y'all. A 2016 hey, search warrant for Lil Woody's iPhone would reveal new details of what started the war between Inglewood and YSL, confirm Woody is a snitch, and reveal another YSL member spoke with detectives. The current investigation states on January 10th, 2015, YSL member Shannon Jackson, aka SB, fired out of a moving vehicle shooting high-ranking Inglewood family blood peanut to death as he stood in front of a barber shop. Initially, this murder was said to be what started the war, but the investigation revealed five days prior to the murder of peanut, an Inglewood family blood named Kelvin Watts assaulted and attempted to rob YSL Woody at a nightclub. The Atlanta gang unit believed YSL took revenge on Inglewood family by murdering the big homie. Hours after Peanut was killed, Lil Woody's girlfriend's parents' house was shot up. 
Woody denied participating in the murder of Peanut, but how Inglewood family looked at it was he was the reason Peanut died. Six months after the murder, Lil Woody would fold under pressure as he was the number one target in the YSL Inglewood war. He'd admit to the lead detective he saw Peanut's killer SB along with Scarface, Yak Gotti, and Nard at McDonald's. Stream 85 plus live channels with no hidden fees. Hey, what's up, what, uh, what are you doing in your job, bro? No, Watch yeah. this. I can show you how to get the sweetest deals online when you shop Depends on all this like Amazon that right though, You bro. can drop prices automatically. That one mean it. Arnold's just out no, of the shooting. Woody was there to pick up Scarface, and Scarface told him they just killed Nut. This would confirm the blurry picture of paperwork that made its way to social media was real, and that Lil Woody was a rat. Surprisingly, within the search warrant, it also states Scarface spoke with lead detective Thorpe. Scarface told detectives he was with Young Thug when Thug gave the other men the rental after Thug had spotted Peanut outside of the barbershop. Scarface also told detectives he saw the same rental at the McDonald's after the murder before getting into Woody's car. Further investigation revealed a possible financial motive for murdering Peanut. At the time, he was the manager of Atlanta rapper Rich Homie Quan, who Young Thug wanted to collab with. According to Peanut's family, Peanut and Rich Homie Quan had no desire to make the collab happen, and YSL members, including Young Thug, would attempt to aggressively pressure Rich Homie Quan into doing it, but Peanut wasn't going to let it happen. It's said that around this time, Peanut grew increasingly concerned for his safety in the month leading up to his death. I said, my boy Thug tried to force a nigga to do a song with him. As he believed Young Thug would send someone his True. way. Peanut's brother, who stood near him moments after he'd been shot, heard Peanut's last words. Thug had me killed. February 19th, 2015. It had been six weeks since Peanut was murdered. Lil Woody walked out of his baby's mother's house carrying a car seat and his eight-month-old daughter. He was going to take her to the hospital as she was having issues and suffering pain. Walking to the car, he saw a silver Pontiac a block away, and he thought it looked suspicious. As he's putting the baby in the car, the silver car starts approaching. His girlfriend and the mother of his daughter were already in the car as the window of the silver Pontiac began to lower, and the barrel of an assault rifle started coming out. Lil Woody told detectives he saw Tay, now identified as Dalviante Fleetwood, as the one aiming the gun. That's when Lil Woody lifted his own 40 caliber Glock before ducking down as the two started exchanging gunfire. He'd grab his daughter, running her back into the house and placing her behind a wall before coming back out, aiming, and firing at the vehicle. A total of eight 40 caliber shell casings would be found at the scene and the shooter's vehicle would crash into a house porch a block up from the shooting scene. The driver had panicked while being shot at, losing control and crashing. The shooter had been disarmed as a 40 caliber bullet struck the barrel of the rifle, going through it and destroying it, leaving the weapon unable to be fired. Hey bro, these music videos had to be shot in 2002. Cause the quality is horrible, my guy. It looked like Boosie movie, um, Get our stories. The men in the vehicle ran from the scene and police interviewed Woody who gave a full statement saying he was the target. Investigators believe this was the fourth time Woody or those close to Woody had been shot at since Peanut's death. Woody himself stated the word on the street was that he was responsible for Peanut. Hours after Peanut was killed, his girlfriend's mother's house was shot up with a 223 caliber rifle. And hours after that, his brother's neighbor's house was shot up. The shooters, realizing they made a mistake, went back after and shot up the brother's house. Woody was able to identify Tay as the shooter because he'd known him for a long time. And just two weeks before the shooting, Tay had been to his house to meet his eight month old daughter. A witness inside of the house the shooters crashed into was also able to identify Tay by a photo lineup. The shooter's vehicle belonged to a woman who told investigators her boyfriend Octavius Franklin, who's also known as Tay, was driving it. She also found it weird that he called her from a different number, saying she should report the car as stolen. Detectives noted the time he called was just after Woody was shot at. 
Octavius was another member of the Inglewood family bloods, and according to his Facebook, a close friend of Nut. Now going back to the second picture of paperwork that hit the internet, it states the day after Woody was shot at, a woman called detectives saying Octavius Franklin had just called her. He told her he was driving down a road when someone started shooting at the car, causing him to crash and leave it at the scene. Inside of the car, police found two phones that belonged to Octavius and a broken 223 rifle across the street. Investigators believe three to five men were sitting inside of the car at the time of the shooting. An overwhelming amount of evidence led to Octavius and Dalviante's arrest, and while in jail, Octavius had his mother call the gang unit detective four to five times. He would call once, and his girlfriend would call one to two times, stating he wanted to give a statement to clear his name. Transported from the jail to police headquarters, Octavius would sign away his rights and detectives would tell him he's facing a possible 25 years so he needs to provide enough information to work off the 25. Octavius would go on to identify his co-defendant as being on scene, armed with a weapon, and fully explain how the shooting went down. Octavius would repeatedly ask what else he could do and at one point even offered to wear a wire for the police. Detectives made it clear they want information on the murder of Peanut, which caused the war between the Bloods in Atlanta. Now it's clear YSL Lil Woody is a snitch. It's evident that YSL Skyface also spoke with detectives and identified everyone in the shooting of Peanut as being present that night, including Yak Gotti. Yak Gotti also gave a previous statement to police in one of two interviews that were used to indict another YSL member with conspiracy to commit murder. It's now known that members of Inglewood family bloods have been targeted by police and Tay has willingly cooperated. And it's crazy to think that from Inglewood family's perspective, it was Lil Woody who started the war after getting Nut killed. But from YSL's point of view, Nut was only killed after Woody was attacked and damn near robbed in a club by Inglewood family. In the end, Woody would snitch on Inglewood family and his own gang who was willing to go to war behind him. So for Young Thug, it sounds like too many members of his own gang, never mind the other gang, have given statements and identified him as the one who orchestrated the murder of Peanut and saw it through as they've identified him as being in the area before and after the murder. With time, I'm sure even more statements will break the internet. That ain't good for a Rico tour, bro. People coming in saying, Doing this as Lil Woody has time. been in paperwork dating back to 2016 and it's only just now coming to light. But with the pressure of these new indictments being applied, more members will be tempted to come forward. At this time, YSL's biggest snitch Lil Woody is an inmate within the Georgia State Prison System after a plea deal for a drug conviction sentenced him to 15 years with 3 years to be served in prison and 12 years on probation. Lil Woody has not been indicted in the YSL takedown, and his earliest prison release date is August of 2023. Man, the amount of snitching in this case, given my honest opinion, Young Thug's freedom might be a thing of the past. I'm not trying to speak negatively. I'm not biased in this situation. I'm taking into account the amount of evidence they already have the amount of witnesses they already have cooperating, who are YSL gang members, Inglewood family bloods, and just everyone else, all the miscellaneous. Hey, look, off the rip. I ain't gonna let my boy content down to the TV. Y'all wanna see that? Y'all go tap in on my boy. I'm gonna put it in the pin comment or the description. I'm gonna keep it a honey though, bro. Free thug, of course. You know what I'm saying? But, man, when you talking about like, you feel me, like a Rico. When they trying to say you you orchestrating this and you running this and you the big dog of this, and then we got people falling in line, you feel me? Like supporting that, you feel me? Like supporting that accusation. Man, you know, you know. Free thug though, man. This for the young people though, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all gotta fall in line, bro, you feel me? Like, Make sure y'all boy moving right, cause at the end of the day, this is what it gonna come down to. You feel me? Like now, I don't know what they got going on. Really, ain't none of my business. But I'm just saying, like at the end of the day, you gotta, you feel me? You gotta, 
live your life for you, bro. Because at the end, you never know. Then this person might be living his life for him. And it might leave you in a situation thug for him being. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. If y'all rocking with the content, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Get over my boy tonight. I'm going to put his video in, uh, in the description. And yeah, man. We finna go crazy. You feel me? I got to run with some over there. So now I got to stop the video. Let's get him in. Pop out. Told us now we gon' rock out I'm from that West Road on an all Grew up on steel stoves, he wrong We had a pallet land in the front Had a young nigga going hard Now I got bitches coming by the ton And my bank roll a little hard Now I gotta walk around with these gun Since a nigga wanna play bomb Yeah, my bitch on Lord Lawn She gon' chew a nigga like gone. I 